Okay, here we go. Base position symbols. This is it. Pay attention to this and really trust me on when I tell you the things you got to remember, things to memorize. Trust me. This is what you need to know. I've set up here a D minor triad, <clears throat> and I've gone through and put it in the three different positions, three different inversions. Root position is when the root is on the bottom. First inversion is the third is on the bottom. Second inversion, the fifth is on the bottom. Now what we do is we look at the intervals that are created against the lowest note. From here on out, the lowest note is always known as the bass note. Lowest note, bass note. All right. The lowest note here is the root. <clears throat> That's root position. The intervals that are created above that lowest note, the root, is a third and a fifth. On the triad, on the first inversion triad, the lowest note, so this is root position, this is first inversion, the lowest note is the third of the chord. And the intervals created above that note are a third and a sixth. On a second inversion triad, the lowest note is the fifth of the chord. And the intervals created above that note are a fourth and a sixth. So when we look over here, these are bass position symbols we're going to write down. Bass position symbols. Notice that it's got the word bass in it. Bass. Um, we look at triads. And each bass position symbol represents, for the most part, all or part of the intervals that are created on those inverted chords. A root position triad could be called a 5-3. But as you'll see in the text, and you'll hear me and other folks talk about it, because the root position triad is the most common, we're just going to go ahead and use no symbol for root position triad. Every once in a while, like in those figured base exercises, you'll see a 5 or a 5-3. Know that that also means root position triad. But because it's the most common, and we don't need to write down a symbol for the most common thing, blank means root position triad, all right? First inversion, the intervals created are a sixth and a third. Uh, again, this is one of the most common, and it was decided centuries ago to just refer to this as a six. So I'm going to take the three out of there. Six is a first inversion triad. Second inversion triad, we already have six for a symbol, so we're going to add the four and call it a six four. There are no third inversion triads because we ran out of notes. What's in the base on a root position triad? The root. What's the symbol? Blank or five three. Maybe I'll write a little five three just to remember what those intervals are. What's in the base on a first inversion triad? The third of the chord. These are chord tones, by the way. Whenever somebody says, what's the chord tone in the base? Chord tones are roots, thirds, fifths, sevenths. Those are chord tones. All right, what chord tone is in the base? On a second inversion triad, the fifth is in the base. Now this is what you need to memorize. If I find a triad, 
I find a triad, and the fifth is in the base. What's the base position symbol? 6, 4. What's the inversion? Second inversion. If I find a first inversion triad, what note am I going to find in the base? The third. Memorize this. Memorize it, memorize it, memorize it. You're going to use this every single day in theory for I don't know how long. All right, let's do seventh chords. When I look at this D minor 7 chord, I see a third, a fifth, and a seventh. That looks weird. Let me do that again. How about I do three, five, and then seven. A third, a fifth, and a seven. Seventh. So three, five, seven are the intervals. But that's kind of clunky. It's the only chord that has the interval of a seventh in it. So our shorthand symbol for a root position seventh chord is a seven. If I look at the next batch, here's a third. Here's a fifth. Here's a sixth. So three, five, and six. What makes this chord unique in this position is it's the only one that has the interval of a sixth and a fifth. So we're going to use those for the symbol. Six and five. Six, five. When we look at these, here's a third. Here's a fourth. And then on top, is a sixth. Six, four, three. <clears throat> so what makes this chord unique is the intervals of the fourth and the third. So we're going to use the symbol four, three for a second inversion seventh chord. Last one. Here's a second. Here's a fourth. And here's a sixth. Six, Four, two. What makes this unique? The four and the two. So we're going to use those symbols. Which chord tones are in the base on these? On a root position, seventh chord. Root position, seventh chord. The root is in the base. First inversion, third is in the base. Second inversion, fifth is in the base. Third inversion, seventh is in the base. Look at that on the chords. Root position, roots in the base. First inversion, the third. Second inversion, the fifth. Third inversion, the seventh is the base note. So again, look at this chart. Memorize it. I should be able to say, I just found a seventh chord with the fifth in the base. Tell me two things about it. Well, it's the 4-3 bass position symbol. It's called a 4-3 chord. And it's a second inversion. I just found, I saw a symbol, 6-5. And I'm looking at a bass note. Well, if it says 6-5, that bass note is the third of the chord. And it's a seventh chord. And it's first inversion. Memorize this. Pop quiz. A uh, triad in first inversion has what base position symbol? Six. And what's the base note? Which chord tone? The third, correct. A seventh chord uh, has the seventh in the base. What's the base position symbol? Seventh chord, seventh in the base. Base position symbol? Four, two. Which inversion is it? Third inversion. All right, memorize this chart, memorize this chart. I'll see you on the next one.